Travis Wayne Goodsell. I uh, just found out that uh, it was Mother's Day today. So I guess I better do a uh, video on the mother of the Christ of Mormons. Even though Mormons don't believe it. So I guess I gotta repeat everything for you before we start this the video. <clears throat> I uh, have been doing videos since 2017 so if you're fairly new you're way behind. So I'm just gonna have to hope that you have the ability to cram the information and know how to look things up yourself because it's going to take an awful long time if I have to repeat everything so Book of Mormon says it's in the learning of the Jews which means it's not Christian so Joseph Smith's first vision yeah it's in the learning of the Jews too which means it ain't Christian Joseph Smith did not see Jesus name of the church is not Jesus Christ we have been conned by Brigham Young and so the whole interpretation of the Book of Mormon and the words of Joseph Smith need to be understood completely differently than what we've been born and raised to believe you have to use the learning of the Jews. The Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith both tell us that it's a manner of prophesying of the latter days as a book of revelation. Just like Rev the Book of Revelation. None of it's real. It is symbolic figures persons, places, events. And oftentimes they'll give us dates of when they are to occur for the latter days. Sometimes they're straightforward as Revelation chapter 12 gives us. Other times they tell us in story form as Revelation 19 kind of merges it together. An angel standing in the sun? Yeah, that's the moon. It's an eclipse. It's 8 April 2024. Yeah, that's next year. Like I said, you're going to have to cram. I would hope you have an interest in the latter days because all hell's about to break loose beyond the hell that's broken loose already because the church wants their kingdom back and they've already set things in motion to make it happen and yeah they don't have their kingdom yet and we're in the final year that's why the church is wrapping things up this year if you hadn't noticed and so Joseph Smith's second vision, which this is the bicentennial year of, Nephi comes to Joseph Smith, says he's Malachi, and Joseph Smith describes him as Emmanuel, the Christ of Mormons, the God Ammon, Adam on Diamond, like I said, you got a lot of work to catch up on. Amun, as spelled in our Doctrine and Covenants, is a misspelling, reveals the hand of the Danites. Brigham Young. Again, you got a lot to catch up on. They frame Joseph and 
turned him into Christian with Jesus as the Christ. Which the first vision, verse 19, says that's abominable. So the great and abominable church, yeah, that's us. So there are only two churches, Church of the Lamb, which doesn't actually have a church. Very few Mormons are a part of that. The majority, if not the high majority, are in the Church of the Devil with the inverted pentagram on the keystone of their headquarters temple. Like I said, got a lot to catch up on. If you refuse to believe and not do the checks yourself, I told you it's going to get ugly. They want their kingdom back. So in the second vision, Joseph Smith tells us that our Christ is after the learning of the Jews by taking us to Acts, which takes us to Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 19. It ain't Jesus. The Gospels were written by Jews. They're not talking about Jesus. They're prophetic books of the latter days, books of Revelation. Christians are abominable too replace the Jewish literature interpretation with Christian Jesus. And so thus, the prophecies of the latter days are hidden because of the false interpretation. And so Joseph Smith goes on to even state in section 103 verse 16, that the man like Moses of the Jews, the Christ, will be a Mormon from the great abominable church. This church, through Brigham. Got a lot to catch up on, don't you? And so, the mother Uh, there was a Jewish gospel, uh, and people are saying that it's probably the same author of the Revelation of Matthew. You should probably call them Revelations of. But uh, the author's name may or may not have been Matthew, may or may not have been Mark, Luke, John, Thomas, Timothy. Judah, etc. They were just putting the names there to try to get their version more attention. And so, uh, it's unclear as the version that I have comes from a Constantine Christian uh, bishop who had it in his possession in his library and so whether this version is post Constantine just trying to do a midrash which is a Jewish commentary example of the Gospel of Mary to answer any questions that were in it or, or there have been indications from other sources that there was an original prior to Constantine and so uh, as uh, one therefore has to have the Christ of Mormons to reveal which parts are legitimate because he's the only one that would know therefore 
we will go over it for you. Because you can't force the interpretation. It is as it is. So you can't change your name to be the Christ. You can't lie about your birth certificate. You can't lie about your parentage. You can't lie about your nativity. You either fulfill the prophecies or you don't. And that's what you're supposed to be checking and looking for. Was someone in the Mormon church, the Brighamite church, not Warren Jeffs, not the Church of Christ, or the Church of, well, now yeah, the Churches of Christ, not the Church of Community of Christ. Originally the Reformed Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Because that's not the prophecy. This time, the Christ does not come from Joseph Jr.'s lineage, bloodline. The Christ of Mormons will come through Hiram. And that's why Hiram's wife went with Heber C. Kimball. Taking Joseph Smith, Fielding Smith Sr. out west here. That's a tragic story in and of itself. As uh, Joseph Smith Sr. was a tyrant, he had been fully converted into the fascist atrocity abomination of Brigham Young. That just makes me cry. But through that lineage, would come the future Mormon Christ to free Mormons from the Mormon Church. Did you look it up? See, this final year, I don't have time to repeat every single video I've done. And I'm pissed with YouTube for sabotaging my video channel to make it nearly impossible for people to find all my older videos. And I've done videos that talked about Mary. So again, this is just a repeat of the information. And so it starts off, the blessed and ever glorious Virgin Mary. So yeah, that's post-Constantine. sprung from the royal race and family of David. That's according to the prophecy. And so, Joseph Smith Sr., as it was his duty as the Master Mason of Canandaigua Lodge, York Rites Freemasonry. It is not Scottish Rites. It is York Rites. There is a very distinct difference. Because the York Rites is Mormonism. Knights Templar, bloodline of King David, to restore the kingdom in America, at southern Illinois, where X marks the spot for the latter days. Solar eclipses give us dates and locations on Earth sun shall be darkened. That's how we know the dates of the latter days from scripture prophecies. And Egyptian gold plates. The Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon is about the Holy Grail. And you'll also notice it says it's in the learning of the Jews. It's Jewish Kabbalah which has to do with prophesying, revelation, astronomy, to know star dates and locations on Earth with solar eclipses. Joseph Smith translation of Revelation chapter 1? Yeah. Jewish Kabbalah. Signs in the heavens and the likeness of things on the Earth. Prophecies. So scriptures not only give us signs in the heavens of the latter days, but are told in prophetic form of 
what is to happen in the latter days. Joseph Smith was murdered by his twelve, just as Jesus was murdered by his twelve, Judah. And so too, wooden bloodline of Joseph Smith seniors restore Joseph's church, save Mormons from Mormonism. And we're in the last year and it's not working out so well. We're looking at a complete and utter destruction of Mormonism. Joseph Smith warned you of that in the second vision. So why then didn't Mormons study to make sure it didn't happen to them? Because they're in bondage to the great and abominable church. That's why. And so, born in the city of Nazareth, no, Ezekiel chapter uh, 17, parable of the eagle, that gives you the nativity and the birth. Because uh, uh, his birth is in the San Francisco area, and his nativity is Oakland. He then moves to Michigan, and then he eventually makes it to Utah, where the latter days he starts his ministry to save Mormons. Matthew also confirms this. Bethlehem, that's Revelation 12 sign, 23rd September 2017. Like I said, you got a lot to catch up on and not much time left to cram it all in. Uh, and so this is Mary though. And so the city of Nazareth is different than where the Christ is born. This would be Utah. So the Mormon mother, the Mormon Christ mother, would be born in Utah. And then she would marry a sun god Emmanuel, who would take her to the San Francisco area and live in Oakland. And then move to Michigan. And let's see. And talks about her father's name, uh, Joachim. I think that's also the divided king's name, or one of the kings of northern Israel. I, I'm not going to check on that. We're, it's going to take too long as it is. And we're winding up on the day here. This day went fast for me. Okay, let's, uh, Mother's Anna, that's not the real names as you figured because it's not Nazareth, and they call her Mary rather than the actual name that I'm going to get to here in a bit. Uh, let's see, you know, so, uh, talking about the temple here, to the temple and officers of the temple and other, they distributed among strangers and persons in poor circumstances. Yeah, that's what tithing was supposed to be used for, according to Malachi. 
Why doesn't the Great Nabal? Oh, right, Great Nabal. Got it. They use it as a protection racket, extortion threat for Mormons to pay up or get punished. All right. Uh, they lived for about 20 years, chastely, in the favor of God and esteem of men. They didn't have any children. So they vowed that if God should give them a child, whether male or female, they would devote it to the service of the Lord. And give it to the temple to work there in the temple. And uh, should I get involved in that? This is to help explain how Mary was immaculately conceived. <laughs> it's called sacral prostitution. During the Greeks, it was women. During the Romans, it was both male and female. So you can see that there's a Greek influence here. Which means it's not the Jerusalem temple. Because this was not practiced in the Jerusalem temple. There are no records that indicate this. However, the Greek, which then turned into Roman temples, yeah, lots of records about them being practiced there. And there were lots of Greek and Roman temples in Israel. And so, yeah, she's of the great and abominable church. You see how that worked? She's of the lineage, but she's in the great and abominable church. This is how I'm able to tell you this information from the prophecies. And so, it's not a matter of being a sacral prostitute, but you'll notice both Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon and John in Revelation call the great and abominable church a whore. That's what it's referring to here. And so she's just a member of the church in the great abominable church. Don't think anything more into that. Because uh, I'm on a well tithing. Yeah, that could, yeah, we pay for sex, don't we, in the church? Can't have sex until you're sealed in the temple and you have to pay your tithing in order to go to the temple, and thus we have to pay for sex. So, yeah, this is accurate. <laughs> Temple's not free, as Isaiah says it's supposed to be. Coming from outside, or yeah, hi. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, all Mormon women are whores in the church, the great and abominable church. Sorry, women, not me. It's them. Get mad at them. I'm trying to get you out of the church. Okay, and so yeah. Mary is born, she's given to the temple. And then Joseph comes, he has children with the wife who had died, so he needs a, another wife to take care of them. Thus, Mary. And yeah, tradition would say 14. When uh, she was taken, so thus, the concept of Mary being pregnant when he buys her. The author doesn't want to discuss that. He'd rather discuss immaculately conceived. Why? It's because he's talking about 23rd September 2017. The virgin is Virgo. And so that's where the difference comes in. And so she marries the sun god the father of the son 
Emmanuel, Father and Son, Son God. And, uh, and so, uh, yeah, it's, he buys her, paying tithing to go to the temple. Which temple do they have Jesus in? It's the Temple of Angels. Because angels come and visit people at the temple, talking about the coming of Jesus, and thus Emmanuel. So the Temple of Angels of the Great and Abominable Church, it's a Los Angeles temple. So the Mormons you're looking for were sealed in the Los Angeles temple. And so... Yeah, I'd have to go into a long video explaining again that the birth is the 17th of March, 1970. So their temple wedding in the Los Angeles temple was in 69. The summer of 69. Nine months would put it in June. That's pretty much the summary of the story of Mary. So now let's get to her actual name. In Genesis, the author of the book of Genesis, there's a pattern of birthright and blessings getting usurped. Joseph Smith was murdered. Brigham Young usurped it. Great and abominable church. Okay, and then the Christ is to be born within the great and abominable church. All of these prophecies from the scriptures of the Jews originate with the Egyptians. Every single one of these prophecies I just gave to you came from the Egyptians. That's also how I know it. And so when we get to the birthright and blessing usurpation by Jacob, of his brother Esau. Yeah, ooh, Nelson brought that up in conference, didn't he? And you think he's a translator, because he said he was working with two Hebrew scholars from BYU. Oh, he didn't say BYU, did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he botched it. And so then the church came out with a video after I did my video exposing him and laughing at him, mocking him, as Elijah did to the priests of Baal. They then came out with another video showing the footnotes that are botched as well. And, uh, yeah. So Jacob for Israel means Yah, the Hebrew God, Prince of God. He is given the name for the birthright blessing bloodline. The future Christ is to come through him now, not Esau. That's what it means. It has nothing to do with let God prevail. That is a white supremacist replacement of Hebrew. Because they don't want to learn Hebrew. Because they've replaced the Jews with Christianity. And so Hebrew translation they don't like it. They want nothing to do with it and they want to cause it to go extinct again. After I had deciphered it and restored it. Academia.edu I have the full complete decipherment not just the script. I had rushed to finish the script 
when I learned of the total solar eclipse over America because I knew what that meant and I knew the urgency of getting the word out to every Mormon and so it was just last year or was it earlier this year it was not too long ago when I finally uh, posted on Academia the full decipherment uh, and so uh, Jacob goes on to have Judah who would then go on to betray Joseph sell him for 20 pieces of silver into slavery and human trafficking and into Egypt where he becomes the Christ the hero of the story and apparently the author couldn't actually name him the Christ made him second of all Egypt rather than making him Pharaoh which is what the story is supposed to say the author of Genesis had many problems with the Egyptian documents and didn't want to actually tell the prophecies as they were supposed to be written because Pharaoh is the false prophet of the great and abominable church in the latter days and Joseph replaces him takes it back and restores the original church of Joseph Smith that's why Joseph Smith was chosen to be the first Christ of Mormons it's because he fulfills the prophecies about him in the book of Genesis and then the man like Moses is the latter-day Mormon see how that worked lots of stuff to catch up on and a lot of it is exclusive material from me so you can't study that unless you study under me and we're getting to the final time so his other son after losing the birthright and blessing has a faith crisis and marries a woman from the great and abominable church which is an interesting prophecy twist because Jacob is the great and abominable church <laughs> but then Esau then marries a woman from the great and abominable church and church as uh, Ephesians uh, symbolizes for us is the bride of the Christ and it's supposed to be a literal woman but also the church is connected also to the Christ symbolically so there's kind of a dual multiple symbol symbolic meaning with all of this that's going on here and so I uh, the wife is from the great and abominable church and the great and abominable church is what he is in because he lost his birthright and blessing and uh, and so uh, because it's Hiram now not Joseph Smith and her name is Judith that's her name the mother of the Mormon Christ is Judith or the the variations let's see if we can find out other variations of it I know Judy is one baby name meaning Judith oops T and D are phonetically the same so yes Utah like I said multiple meanings for prophecy Judith is a girl's name Judea 
starts his ministry in Judea. Or Jewish Testament. Seriously? They don't even have Judah. Translations. <laughs> Yahudit has Arabic. Geudita, Italian. Hudis, Yiddish. Ayudit, Irish. Uh, Jitka, Jody, Jody. Uh. And yeah, there's Jody, different spellings of Jody. That's interesting. So that's probably the closest I'm going to get. Juditha, Judith, Judita, Juta, Jutka, Judah, Jutta. So you get the idea. And so, uh, then the author doesn't attribute Judith to having any kids. But, a later story gives Esau uh, a child through his first wife, but a different name, but would be Judith. And the name is Ra, the Egyptian name for the son See what they did here? Instead of the sun god, it's the replacement of the sun god Amun from the Egyptians with Ra. Hilarious, if you know the language. So, there you have it. That was pretty much it. And the name. And I could have just done the name, but who would believe me without other information? And yeah, because of the name, she would go on to betray her son, just like her his brother would betray him. So, you're looking for that guy, too. I still haven't figured out her death date, because they don't give Judith this death date. But the death has already happened, if there's anybody still listening. 12, 21, 21.